we're waiting on Bartleby and Hellhound. Hellhound will be here late. I don't know if Bartleby will be here, so we're just going to press on without them. Um, this does two things for us. It, it speeds the course along a little quicker so we can get you guys through this and on to primary as soon as possible because there's a lot of people on. So probably going to get some JTAC missions like Operation Awestruck. Um, following this course, I'm going to re request that we do Awestruck or something if, that, if it's not broken uh, so we can get some practice in. Awestruck is a really good mission because it requires three JTACs and you get like multiple A-10s and whatnot. Um, so with that said, we'll con well this is a continuation on from sorry TV's on. Uh, continuation from part two. So part one and part two actually. So part one, part two, part one was mostly just an introduction right or intro introduction to the course. It basically gave you the history of the JTAC, what you do, how you do it, uh, all the administrative stuff, all the paperwork. All the nine line check in fac a stuff you know i'm talking about um so now we're gonna go into we went into some application of the air power uh, a couple days or yeah when we did part one part two so you guys got to get some practice on type one type two control now we're going to uh, move into the actual application of type three uh as well as hlz coordination and stuff like that so a lot of stuff happening today. Um, the way it's going to work is basically we're going to get all of you guys uh, one control per aircraft. Um, and one, once I'm get, once I'm comfortable with all you guys having a baseline established from the last course because it's been about a week, uh, we'll proceed on, and then we'll spend we'll have one person do like three or four different controls, HLZ coordination uh, while you're doing cast and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to be really doing like five things at once. Uh, you're going to be getting at uh, sometimes uh, you'll you'll get one aircraft checking on station while another cra aircraft is providing cast. You're going to have to deconflict the airspace. Uh, you're also going to be coordinating, you know, uh, medevacs and so on and so forth. So a lot of good stuff. Uh, other primary duties for JTAC is you're also, like I said, your extension of the ground force commander. So he's going to tell you what he wants, what the ground force commander's intent is. If his intent is to neutralize the target or destroy it then you as a JTAC need to come up with a solution to basically uh, exert his intent. So if he says our objective is to neutralize all enemies in that town, obviously you know what you're going to be doing uh, uh, as a JTAC. You're probably going to be coordinating, if you're on helicopters inbound, you're going to be coordinating an HLZ that's going to be, uh, that's going to... Um, put you in line with the target and deconflict yourself from the target right so you don't if you're if you're about to ambush a, a town you're not going to freaking uh drop your helicopters in the middle of the objective you're going to offset so you're not giving warning to the enemy um so knowing those capabilities and knowing how to insert and extract targets are uh, very uh, important um with that said your job also is to ma manage the battle space and the airspace above you uh, as well as working with a Ford observers and uh, dudes that are basically putting artillery and mortars on the ground and make sure that, you know, if you are about to call in a helicopter, that they're not going to be shooting artillery over their flight path. Uh, so deconfliction is very paramount. That's your number one job as a JTAC is communication and deconfliction. Um, so with that said, we'll flow on. Uh, uh, yeah, I need to get you guys what are called lineup cards. I heard you guys talking about nine line cards earlier. Uh, so I'll get you guys that nine line or basically this lineup card that I use on a regular basis at work uh, has like three different nine line uh, blank nine lines on it. it has you room for your check in so it's all on one piece of paper and uh, it, it's wow, really good tool. Sexy. Yeah, it's a really nice tool. Uh, I just need to get it uh, and as soon as I go back to work, I will get it. I've been on med leave for like two weeks though, so I'm sitting on my you ass okay? painting painkillers. It's great. You uh, what happened to you? The uh, slip disc, a ruptured disc, actually. Oh, that hurts. That sounds like it sucks. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. great. Yeah, I have a one centimeter herniation in my L4, L5. It's nice, though. They give me a lot of... Uh, something hmm? similar to the nine-line card that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because I, I linked it in chat, the wiki.evil. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever you have, whatever works for you, use it. Uh, if it's effective, oh. if it's not effective, obviously don't use it. Um, I, like I said, I'll just, I'll give you guys the tools to use. Uh, and I also heard that you, somebody wanted uh, the actual JPUB 3093 
uh, scanned, I can do that for you. Like I said, just yep. let yeah, me, that let would me get back to work, and I will scan yep. all the applicable pages for you guys. Uh, be as well as, like, uh... danger close numbers for weapons. So, like, a GBU-12, it'll basically give you a weapons list of what actual aircraft have, and you can actually use that in-game. I've used it a couple of times. Um, uh... <laughs> so, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, the JPUB-3093, it's actually... You know what? It is in PDF format. If you Google JPUB 3093 JFire, it, there is actually a PDF formatted version of it. Oh, but, so if uh, it's already done, then I don't have mm -hmm. to. Uh, I don't have to fuck with scanning it. What am yeah, I? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all on there. What was that? What did you say? JPUB it's what now? JPUB 3.09-3 for joint firepower application. Is it like the same that you got? Yeah, it's the same exact thing. My thing, my mine is like a booklet that's about 200 pages long, and it's got everything that has to do with calling in air support and aircast and all that kind of stuff on it. Uh, but that was issued. Google poo away. Hey, Overlord, if you find one, make sure you copy paste it on channel, please. Yeah, buddy, I'm uh, I'm running that Google poo right now. Um. Okay, <laughs> okay so cool. moving on here. Uh, so biggest the biggest thing is the application. So this the third part of this course is really uh, wrapping everything together, right? So not really wrapping up uh, the lecture that I gave you guys about a week ago, but it's more or less expanding what I taught you in the part two portion of you know talking an aircraft onto a target, getting their eyes on, orienting yourself onto the target, using the different methods that you, or different uh, different equipment and different tactics to get your eyes on a target. Um, but the thing is, it's a video game, right? So it's not, it's not, I hate to say it, but, you know, a lot of the stuff that might be applicable in the real life, like a laser detonator, ground-based soap flam and all that, although it's it's nice and neat and cool to actually be able to use in game, um, it's better if you learn it on a rudimentary level, that way you, you're not relying on that technology. Uh, and that's why I, I train, I, I use maps and I use, you know, just basic binoculars, because it's a lot easier for me to do that than if my batteries run out and I've been using a soap flam that, and you know now I'm relying on that technology, and I don't I don't know how to do it on a basic level. Um, with that said, if you guys want to, then you can. But here's the thing: the SoFlam and and buddy lasing, although works, uh, it's very operator dependent. So it really you know if you know how to use the SoFlam, you don't have to tie it up to the dagger. That's cool. Uh, but if you you know if you want to buddy laze and the pilot doesn't understand you know how to actually employ that weapon because there's a minimum distance or a minimum altitude that that GBU has to see that laser for the track uh, then obviously it doesn't matter how well you know how to use a SOFLAM if the pilot doesn't know how to drop the goddamn weapon in the first place so uh, that's why dude very rudimentary uh, that's why I always you know I train uh, at least when I when I uh, use my weapons I, I use very direct basic fires right so I use guns I use rockets I use a lot of stuff that's very basic um, because that's really what gets the job done. Now, if you need to drop a GB-12, by all means, do it. Um, but I would, but I don't, I, in real life, in, you know, in Afghanistan, I've never seen a ground-based less days that are using, uh, uh, buddy lacing a GB-12. Never, not one time. It's always self lacing by the, the asset, the, the platform. Um, with that said, if you need, if you want to use a soap lamp, go ahead. Um, but personally, I can run you through the basics of how to use it, but eh, I, I don't really need to use it in this game. So the, all my training is going to be focused on very basic level stuff. Well, I guess basically the reason I wanted to mention it was like uh, in case you had an A-10 coming in and you wanted him to uh, drop a bomb for you and you want it to hit in the right place, wouldn't you want to use the lays instead of just having him uh, spitball it? Um, Hold on, somebody just whispered me. Then I'd like to have a A-10 with MK-82. Now here's the other thing. Uh, so what happens if you don't have an A-10 and you have a, a UH-1 with just a minigun on it? Well, I mean, it... Uh... If, you oh. have a, if you have a GBU-12, right? So if you have a bomb, if you have a 500-pound bomb, it's nice to have, right? But if the pilot can drop, dumb drop it, I would much rather do that personally. Okay. Uh, now, like I said, take it for what it's worth. Uh, you can watch Krause's video on the, the SoFlam and the GPS and all that good stuff. Uh, and that's just really just bonus points for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I agree with you. I just, I 
and not being a uh, flyer, I don't know how easy it is for them to just dumb drop it and actually mm, it's hit It's not it easy. Anyway. Nope, it's not. Well, that's what I was saying. Well, whatever. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna keep trying to uh, do my Google Foo here. Okay, so uh, we'll move on here uh, as soon as Mr. Hellhound or Castle. Uh, so today the, the concept is Hellhound will be in a fixed wing asset. Castle, if you want to hop in a helicopter of your choice that's got offensive weapons on it, uh, you can do that. Just check in on channel two long range. Um, so here's the, so here's really cool. how how I run a mission. So let's say that we have rotor wing assets that are using that are primarily used for transport. So you have like AH sixes, UH ones, CH forty sevens. Uh, I usually have those on a transportation net, or like a cast bat net, or uh, something of that nature. Um, and then I separate that with my cast. So let's say that I have an AH-6 that's doing transport, but also has a offensive weapons. Um, I usually push them to the cast net once they're done uh, doing their transport duties, or, or you know, when they're off net uh, and they're not doing anything. Question. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, if you have two nets, you got two radios at that time, or you switch channels? Uh, switch channels. RTOs help. The RTOs help. You can switch channels. Uh, two radios would be great. Um, mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If you have two JTACs and you just solve that problem, or if you have an RTO, you solve that problem. Um, but personally, I just, I, I don't know, man. Uh, just play by ear. Uh, if you're mm -hmm. really task really saturated, happen. push everybody to one net, um, but you're going to have a lot more comms on it. Yeah, understood. Carry on. Alright, so uh, basically today, guys, we're the first part of the course. Uh, we'll, we'll continue on with the actual employment of weapons, but uh, first things first is uh, task coordination, or not coordination, but uh, transport. Alright, so a lot of the things that you're going to see are, you know, commanders are going to say, this is my target, or this is where I'd like to land my troops, and you're going to essentially have to pick out a point on that map that is convenient enough to where you where you can get there on foot, or by whatever transportation that you're dropping off, and uh, also deconflicts you from the target, so you're not getting so close to the target that the enemy can actually engage you, um, but you're not making it so inconvenient that it's taking you 30 minutes to get to your objective, if it should only take you 10 minutes. Um, so. Let's say, for example, uh, let's reference the town directly to the east, uh, Rasmon. Uh, so let's say that our main objective today is to set up a, um, a blocking force at the T intersection at grid 063112. Uh, the T intersection that goes from the uh, west, uh, that splits off in a T intersection to the west on the MSR that's going from the uh, southeast to the, or sorry, southwest to the northeast. Uh, so that main uh, that main intersection there, that is our primary objective, and we are, we want to ingress from the east, right? So what are some considerations that you're gonna have to take into account from this point? Thank you for whoever just marked that. Yep. Well, uh, where the enemies are. Okay, so you have where the enemy is supposedly at, right? So that's our main objective. That town is our our only objective at this point. Let's say hypothetically that the enemy is uh, north. Uh, at the zero uh, six three, the one one four, that grid. All right. So let's say that there's a enemy uh, enemy insurgent team that's in that area. All right. And they're known to operate in that area. Okay. I got a thought. It's not really important, but concerning civilian casualties, I would get a run like along the MSR to minimize that. If there's no any friendlies, uh, right on that uh, path. Okay, so civilians, uh, casualties, friendlies, uh, pretty important, right? So you want to know where the civilians are, what the rules of engagement are for uh, for you as a JTAC, correct? So you're going to ask the ground force commander, you're going to say, what are my limitations? I have two A-10s that are going to be on station. I have two, you know, two Apaches that are going to be on station. We're also coordinating um, an HLZ. So what what are my limitations? What do you want me to do? What are you, What is your end goal? All right, so let's say that, for example... He says, you know, we've already told these, or let's say per the mission, the ROEs are very uh, unrestrictive, so we can basically engage anything that we PID. Uh, so you're not going to basically go in there and unleash an A-10 on that whole town before you go in, right? So you're going to want to use some constraint of why you can't PID some, some assets. So what does that mean for you? You ask the JTAC, or not the JTAC, the Ground Force Commander. 
Do you have a recon team? Do you have a sniper team? Can they basically get eyes on that target for you and designate or uh, give you grids towards targets, right? Can we ask the um, our pilot to do a show of force slash recon, or I mean, would that be too difficult? Uh, yeah. I mean, them? if if it's if it's not against the mission rules, then absolutely. But you know, you do you really want to use a, a show of force risky, if yeah. if it yeah exactly if they have if you don't know if they have air defense or not. Because I've seen missions where, you know, Shilkas pop out of nowhere, ZFC-23s are in place on a target. Do you really want to risk your a air asset to give a show of force just to get some recon done? So the, those are some th those are questions that you're going to have to ask yourself and the ground force commander, right? What would be the next, sorry, to keep it on, what would be the next best alternative then? Uh, like, okay, recon team, and apart from that, what could you do? That's, what would be your advice? Uh, as In far as getting eyes on a target or trying to, you know, pick out eyes targets on. of opportunity, on, yeah. uh, I would put personally, I would probably put myself in a position that I can observe the town while the main element uh, proceeds in, right? So I have a long-range radio. I can get in c contact with the uh, ground force commander if I need to, or he can open up a window for me that says hey, from this point, you know, at this time, uh, all, all fires will be ceased on the target. Uh, yeah. So you basically set that up uh, separately. Now, sometimes it depends on the mission, right? So sometimes your your ground force commander is going to want want you next to him, uh, or there might be some missions where you might be able to have a TAC B team. You might have a tactical air control or air control party team to where you can let's say okay, let's set up the mission here. So uh, let's say for example that target one is our main uh, objective, right? Let's see the the. Demo here. I didn't realize how many people were on the primary. Lots and lots. 80. <laughs> Holy shit. Saturday night as well. I think more people would be out. <laughs> they are out. With their computers. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Fuck them. I'm here for my day pack course and I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm not gonna let that bother me. They're saving the world, guys. <laughs> well, they can do it without air support. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you want to well, save the world? Not without me. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, reference the map. Alright, so we got target one is our main... That's our main objective, right? Or the... That's where we think the enemy is in the actual cross in the road. Let's see here. Um, Alright, so objective one is the actual town. That's our main objective for this mission. Target one is the uh, is the what we think is the known enemy position. Phase line hot dog is our limited advance. HLZ Alpha is where the where the uh, ground force commander wants to put our troops. All right, there's nothing that says that we as a, as a TAC B team, if I have two if I have a two or three man JTAC team, that I cannot put myself in a position to overwatch a town on the high ground. Uh, let's say that that's at this point. What does uh, HLZ stand for? Helicopter landing zone. Okay. So, what, are we going to get dropped in by Hilo onto Alpha? And then, uh... So, if you reference this point here, so... Okay, so think of it just this way. This is why the JTAC career field is such a critical career field. Because you can be a long-range reconnaissance team at LRS. You can be a, recon, a forward observing recon team. You, just because you're a JTAC doesn't mean that you have to use ground fires. Or, or air fires. You can use the ground fires. Let's say that you have a couple of howitzers that are set up. Uh, and you know you're they're, able, they're set up basically as for the afford observer, but you as a JTAC are moving in uh, in afford observer fashion to the point on the map at zero six seven one one one. All right, so where do you think where do you think you'd want to dr get dropped off at? Let's say that you have a, an H six or uh, a UH one or a Blackhawk dedicated just for your transport. Where would you put yourself? Uh, zero seven one one zero seven. <laughs> 
I would say 067111. I know it's already been marked, but somewhere around there where you get a nice view and you're above. Okay, so that's that's where you know that's your end point. That's where you want to go, but you're not going to drop directly on where you're going to be sitting setting oh, up, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'll where, where would you want to be? Okay, so that's good. Um, now here's some other things too. You have that terrain. So if you look at the elevation markers, elevation marker, the high points, highest points at 2150. So if you approach anywhere from the south. The, uh, from the southeast, then you should be fine, right? They shouldn't be able to see you audibly. Um, so just take that in consideration. If you're if you're farther away, then uh, you know if you're if you're within out of outside of visual range, it might take you five ten minutes to get there. But if you can get there in advance and observe the town before the friendlies get to that objective, then you're obviously setting yourself up for success. Um, right? There's nothing that says I have to be at phase line hot dog with the rest of the ground forces. So yeah, one question, when you said that about time, you see the thing for me is, you know, I have everything out, I can write it out, give a nine on everything, but timing for me is a big issue, like I can't do it off the rack quickly, and I'm wondering, is it a time critical job being a JTAC? To some respect it must be, like I can speak to you. No, it up, is. But... Uh, let's say that you, you're, the ground force commander has set up a certain times that he wants to, let's say that your mission is uh, got a time limit of 60 minutes. You know, you're obviously not going to spend 45 minutes trying to get to your your Overwatch position and engaging that target. Um, you're gonna, you're probably going to be in place with the, uh, uh, you're going to probably be in place with the ground troops. You know, if you're on the fly, you're going to be on, you're going to probably be on the front lines with the, mm. with you know whatever squad lead that's at the at the front element there. Uh, if you have a little bit more time and you can get dropped off and you have another asset, then by all means set yourself up. You know. But I mean, like I. I'm not saying it's a big deal, but I don't want like you know to be breaking rules by getting other people like the ground force commander then getting irritated like oh you're taking such a long time I might as well have just sent you, you know, know an that's attack the force thing and... that they're gonna have to live with if they want effective cast then they you know they can't rush you. Okay, as long as so that that's understood between us and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, that that's my outlook on it. You know, if if it's an if it's if it's an experienced ground force commander, uh, he's gonna tell me what he wants and I'm gonna do everything that I can to get there. Uh, if it's an inexperienced guy, you're basically going to have to tell him what your capabilities are. And if he wants to proceed without you being on station, then he needs to proceed without you being on station. Okay. Um, now, where you're positioned, whether you're at that grid at 067111, or if you're on phase line hot dog, that's completely up to you. Um, but my whole, this whole purpose of this course is to basically get you thinking outside of the box, right? Um, I get a lot of I see a lot of JTACs that are basically in the first squad and you know like I said the last time that we were in here is that I like to be at the front lines but comma if I can be on a, in a different position where I'm not exposing myself and I can clearly overwatch the target then I'm gonna want to be there um, now like I said you're but here's the thing this so let's say that we we finally get some approval for cast now what are your restrictions that you're gonna be looking at Well, uh, you've got your friendlies near HLZ Alpha, so you're probably going to want to come in, uh, and then actually, but you, you can't really come in, have the aircraft come in, and, uh, I guess the best way would have it go, like, east to west or west to east and have no further But than, who are uh, you at the east? You're at the east on top of that hill, right? So you've now just created more restrictions for your aircraft. So we, that's, that's essentially what I've been, I was trying to get at. Well, yeah, can that's we, what I was saying, is you'd have to have him, like, go no further south than, like, northern. Exactly, uh, one, so one, one, that's the whole point of the restrictions line, right, is to get you thinking yeah. about that. So if you've if you no shit, have your, your phase line uh, south of the objective, and you as a, your attack B team is set up east of the objective, then everything to the west and to the north is fine. Um, so those are some considerations that you're going to have to take into account when you're in, uh, planning CAS. Was that talking about the ingress? The, yeah, ingress. when you're clearing them hot, when you're giving yeah. them a nine line and you say... So would going in north be all right? Or would that still be a bit tricky? Uh, it depends on where the friendly position is. Uh, now, like I said, that's why you give them a restriction and say do not engage mm. anything south of the 111, you know, uh, northing line or east of the 066 easting line. Okay. Uh, so that gives you, you know, a good coordinate. Uh, basically, here's the other thing, too. You don't really have to necessarily say a grid line, say reference the northeast to southwest running road. All right. See the T intersections that are, you know, at the center of town. Do not engage anything south of that or east of that. All right, so that gives you a good visual representation of where you're allowed to engage. And I think it also helps, you know, if you set them up with a good IP, right? Like, I just marked one there, like, 
what do you think if you have them come in that direction? Yeah, that's fine, man. IPs are great tools. I'm not saying don't use IPs. I'm, you know, uh, just okay. the, the, when you start giving IPs out, it's easier for me as a JTAC to give them a restriction to the target than it is to set up an IP and then orient them to the target. Because now, let's say that I set up my IP here. All right, so IP alpha is directly south over over friendly position, right? If I want them to engage targets of target one, I can't clear them from 180 to 360. Now from IP alpha, I've got to push them off to the 115 and then engage targets east to west. Um, so that's where IPs might hurt you. Uh, comma, just think outside of the box here. You can say, yeah. you know, from IP alpha, proceed. Uh, your run-in is going to be from 290 to 090. All right, so what does that mean? From IP alpha on the target oriented, zero nine, or 290 to 290. So basically east to west. And that gave, that keeps me separated from uh, the north of the JTAC, or east, I'm sorry, it keeps me separated west of the JTAC team and north of the friendlies. Also, here are some other things as well. Like, let's say you wanted to drop a GBU-12 on target one. Um, if it's a precision guided weapon, it doesn't. If the, the only th I use more restrictions when I'm giving uh, nine lines for direct fires for like gun runs, stuff that might you know, that's uh, that's based off of the wing, the the angle of attack of the aircraft. When you drop a GBU-12, he's flight level, you know, he's wings level at a at a certain altitude, and he's just waiting for that bomb to drop. So. Um, Restrictions, you know, you can overfly friendly, overfly friendly as, as long as they understand that they have to hit that target with that bomb. Um, just, you know, that's where you get danger close from. Um, if they're outside of a, you know, let's say for example, a GB12, just pulling this out of my ass here, it's 200 meters danger close. Well, friendlies are a kilometer away. It doesn't matter if I clear them south or north, as long as I'm not putting my friendlies within that danger close area. But yeah. generally, you don't overfly mm -hmm. friendlies with your fixed wing assets. Or even rotary wing. Makes sense? Yeah. Quick question. Uh, yeah, go. Uh, how far away are IPs in real life from the target? Uh, they could. It depends on what you're doing with that target. So let's say that if your target's an air defense, like let's say it's an SA-6, you're obviously not going to set your IP three miles away. You're probably going to set about 20 miles away. So it just depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. Let's say, for example, that uh, in real life, that I w I have what's called a detection concern. I don't want the aircraft or the enemy knowing that I have aircraft on station because an F-16 at 30,000 feet, although it's hard to see, it's really easy to hear. So those are some considerations that you're gonna have to want to take into effect as well. What is minimal uh, distance for IP? Uh, minimum in it's, real, it's depending yeah, in real life in real life there is no minimum because it's completely dynamic based on the target <laughs> I, like I hate to give that answer but it's very dynamic my I, I, there's no there's no table that says IPs will be you know five kilometers from this target um, that's where you, you as a JTAC have to really think outside of the box comprende yeah he's just yeah, see, okay. this was French. Alright, so I was going to use the targets that I placed on the airfield as our objective today, but, you know, now that we're referencing the map and the town directly to the east of us, that's going to be our objective. And basically, we're going to orient our cast scenarios off of what we see on the map now. Alright, so I will play as a, as a ground force commander, phase line hot dog. I've got, you know, a company sized element that's setting up a blocking position. We're going to be moving to the northeast and clearing objective one. Alright, you as a JTAC, I'm not saying that you guys have to use the JTAC team marker on the map as your point of entry, but I highly recommend thinking outside of the box here. Let's say that our targets are target one. Let's say that we have more enemies here. All right, so enemy dish composition. Let's say that's a that's a, a ZSC-23. That's going to be in place there. Um, what are you thinking about now? Let's say you have two A-10s and an Apache on station. Are you going to want to use your A-10s or your Apaches to take that out? Apache to take a dish com. Why is that? Well, first, uh, Apache is going to be easier to pick up the enemy uh, since they got different movement speed than aircrafts. They but they're also a lot lower, right? So yeah. 
A10. Wow. I, I would, I would the definitely A10. exactly. I would definitely use an A10 because, because it's that gun is going to. It's way harder to hit. You're going to be way higher. Um, now, if you've got a freaking uh, an Apache with Hellfires, now you have some standoff distance. Um, but, like I said, be a JTAC. Think outside of the box. Also, like, the... I'm not saying that the Apache is the best side the solution. I'm just saying, you know, you really need to take that in consideration. And it's like, do you really want to waste one of your fucking Hellfires on a technical? Exactly. <laughs> or do you want to use a gun run and, you know, mow it down? Uh, but here's the thing. Hellfires are really good because the danger close for a Hellfire is about 110 meters, which means that its effective range or its effective air radius is about 40 meters. Yeah, which means if I want to, like if I want to take out that technical, it's a perfect weapon to do it because a gun using that A10. I don't know if you guys have seen this in the game, but an A10 has a pretty big footprint when you unload that thing into the ground, as opposed to a Hellfire where you are more precise, but you're taking a little more risk. So it's really dependent on the ground force commander if he says, hey, your restrictions are not to kill friendlies. Well, you know, collateral damage is going to be a little lower with the Hellfire than it is as a gun run. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so here's the loadout that we need to have. Um, I've got an M4 with a uh, 203 tube on it. Uh, I usually, generally don't carry a lot of ammo because if I, as a JTAC, am needing to shoot my weapon to defend myself, then there should be more ammo on the ground because everybody else is dead. Um, with that said, I carry at least a minimum of four smoke grenades, uh, you know, hand-thrown smoke grenades to mark my position. And then, obviously, you guys heard my spiel on uh, M1, or M713 uh, smoke grenades, and mainly because I have an effective range of about two to 300 meters with it, and it's easier for me to just shoot it down range than it is to talk somebody on, onto the target. Um, now, with that said, that doesn't mean that those are your only mark methods of marking. You know, you can use visual mark, uh, visual representations. If you say, you know, uh, Pig One One, Fluffer Six Nine, reference the northeast to southwest running road in the town of uh, Rasmon, uh, reference a T intersection in the middle of the town, call contact. Everything to the north of that T intersection is enemy. I have now designated, and he can reference that point on a map as a, so as a target designation. What's up? When you're asking the aircraft to um, call contact, are you asking him, uh, tell me if you see the exactly. enemy I'm call, talking call about? Call contact essentially means, is, are you seeing the same thing that I'm seeing? On the map or in real life? Like in, in real life. life. Visually. Yeah. Then okay. visually. 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 Okay, thank you. It's like, right, can so you see he... with your eyeballs? Like exactly. What I'm looking so at. here are some other things that you can use as well. Uh, if they're MVG capable, you can freaking throw on your laser target marker and your rifle, right? Your IR pointer. Um, Can I add something armor-specific yeah. with the IR? Remember, uh, those IR um, thingies on your weapons have a limited range, so oh. if you are lacing something with it uh, 400 it's meters like away, away, nobody can see where you are aiming at because... Only good for about 100 meters or so. Yeah, 100 Here's meters or 100 meter 50. Take, in, take in consideration, I don't use my IR pointer to mark targets. Uh, what I will use it though is at night, if I'm flying a mission, I'll literally turn my IR pointer on on my rifle, point it up into the sky and rope the aircraft to me. So essentially what I will do is I'll point the rifle at the aircraft with a laser marker on and that basically gives them a two-way signal from my, my rifle to where he's at. It's called roping. Make sense? Okay. the helicopter, I will essentially do this with my rifle, that way he sees it. And I usually use those for Casavax or helicopter extractions and stuff like that. Make sense? Yeah. Alright dudes, so uh, get a vector with uh, two batteries minimum, uh, 117 for long range communications, and that's essentially all you need. The GPS, and, or obviously a map, but a GPS and a compass are good good tools to have. Obviously I would recommend having a compass, um, but a GPS you don't absolutely need to have. Uh, but you'll notice that you will have it about 80% of the JTAC missions. Um, right. Am yeah. I good with a uh, 148? Uh, sure, yeah, take a 148. Also, map That's tools great. is an awesome thingy if you know how to use it. Yeah, the yeah. map tools are great, but... Well, first uh, three points in nine lines, if you know how to give them. Yeah, alright, well, I mean, uh, I mean, is it used for anything else besides first, first three points? I don't know. 
Alright, I'll go get a one, so one seven. Okay, so here's here's the situation, here's a scenario that I'm gonna give to you guys. Alright, so we're gonna brief the basically you you guys have already seen the mission. We got it and B Dishka team in the middle of the town. Objective one is the the what our main objective is uh, the friendly element. Uh, you have enemy insurgents at target one and the JTAC team. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to use that point. Use it if you want, but uh, come up with a different The JTAC team. All right, so here's what I need from Castle. Uh, go ahead and hop in a Blackhawk for me. If you spawn me one, I can't spawn shit. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll spawn you one, and then uh, Mr. Uh, Hellhound, if you can be on station with an A10. Yep. Long range two, check. Yeah, five to five. Sweet. The range on the one four eight. If you're if you're the pilot and you're trying to speed team with the one four eight, it's gonna be like you're gargling while you're giving the nine line. You don't want yeah. that. With a jet, it sucks. With a helicopter, it could work. Oh, I got my smoke. Uh, do you want me to switch to an instructor slot later so I can spawn my stuff s myself or... Yeah, that'd be cool if you want to later on. Okay. Oh, you don't have to do it right now. Yeah, not yet. So go ahead and kill the engine, please. As a group, uh, an insertion point and your position on where you're going to observe the enemy. Alright, well, I guess okay. wait, so all of us have to decide together. Well, right. we have to have together. a group discussion, guys. It, right, well, Hope it, you remembered your books. Honestly, I like uh, Hill 2101. I mean, it's got good eyes on and uh, that would be a good location. You, got but elevation. you can go southwest a bit more as well. Yeah. I was just going to stop the rest because uh, that, I don't want that dish from switching slots. Uh, uh, just destroy us if it catches us on the top of that ridge line what and we have limited cover. I said the compound? See the sure. compound at uh, 290? I was thinking just southwest of there, there's a large rock that we could use as cover. While gaining an extra 100 to 200. We could also use that compound south of that.
Should we not start at like hill 2150 and then move there, seeing as it's yeah. right behind the hill? That's the yeah. That's the reason yeah. I put that blue sure. X on. That's what I'm saying. Zero. All right, let's so get that uh, Sure, sure thing. Sure thing. All right. Uh, all right, Fluffer. R L Z. Where the fuck is Fluffer? Are we all? I my game crashed. I'll be right back. All right. As for L Z, no, we probably don't want to have the aircraft. With how about uh, I'm look at that road intersection there since it's only like a uh. 300 meter run, we can yeah. do 300 meters. I was just thinking really quick, Fluffer, in this situation, are we technically with the infantry and you want us to go to HLZ Alpha and then push from there, or do we have our own helicopter just for us? That's, you're going to have to coordinate that with the ground force commander. Um, Very well. I don't want to, like, it's not really a big a curveball, uh, right. but uh, that's generally how it's going to work. You're going to have a limited amount of assets that are going to be allocated to transport, and how you come up with that plan is completely up to you guys. Uh, so you need to, that's the whole point of the JTAC is communication, right? So you're going to have to talk to the ground force commander. He's going to tell you what the limitations are. Then you need to talk with your ground force right, commander and come up with that plan. Let's go ahead and go with that, uh, what we have marked on the map now. That sounds good. So LZ Devil and then... LZ Devil the push up the, the road to uh, oh. begin observation we'll on top of Hill 2150, and from there we have three points of reference that we could push to, based on uh, what we see. Alright, what was the grid on that? Grid for LZ is 071107, pushing up to Hill 2150, direct west 068108. And then we have three positions marked on the map for possible locations of observation on the okay. objective. Okay, perfect. What approach do you want to LC Devil, sir? I would like to approach the LZ from the south along the ASR. Good. Could we do like a aerial observation of the ops point before we land, or is that not necessary? It's up to you guys. Let's say that you've already done that. And, okay. uh... Yeah, I think we should probably focus more on the JTAC part. <laughs> Uh, bring the helo in that way we skirt uh we skirt the AO. Where's IP Walrus? Uh, zero seven by fucking zero nine. And make sure I marked it in the right. Yeah, you uh, got it. Oh, I see what you're saying. I mean it was just like a general just have the helicopter come in from that way so we skirt wide around the AO. Yeah, 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 I see where it is now. And then we follow the MSR? Yeah, I was thinking yeah, just go ahead and fly direct south from here, and then fly from Bastam east. Boys okay, crack. so here, here are some other things that you're going to have to consider as well. When when the aircraft checks on with you, you're going to have to pass them all this information. All right, so if right. A-10, if HOG-11 is checking on station, and you are displaced from the main friendly force, you need to let them know where your friendly forces are so they have situational awareness on it. Okay. In this situation, do you want us to have imaginary uh, friendlies at phase line hot dog? Exactly. No, they're well. So we're we're. This is from the basic kickoff. So you have three. Let's say we have, uh, you know, simulated right now three Black Hawk helicopters. Two are dedicated specifically for the uh, for the platoon that it's going to be landing at HLZ Alpha, and then you are going to be dedicated directly to, for one helicopter for your own insertion into the uh, area. Uh, I would coordinate this as a you will be dropped off first, and then the other two helicopters will be dropped or they'll drop their personnel off after the fact. Okay. All right, so you don't have to brief me on this, but that's those are just some considerations to take when you go into the server real world. Um, now you might not be in that situation. They might they you might be dedicated to one helicopter for all your infantry, like a you know as a, a Chinook or something like that. So those are some things that you're gonna have to take into consideration. All right. Yep. Um, okay, so the, the, you've already maintained situational awareness on this. You know, you need to let your pilots know what the pilot, what the plan is, or your helicopter pilots. You need to, you need to push them to a net. You need to push your air assets for CAS on a different net, and you also be, need to be cognizant of where your ground force commander is, because I'll be on channel one. I got a uh, flight plan laid out on the map too. Then I lost all my gear. I'll be right back. Don't risk our air support when we come back in. We're shrouded by the uh, terrain. 
Mm. I think that's, right. a, that's a relatively good plan. So we follow the route, LZ Devil, then what's begin good about, track, and then cop on. What's good about these locations too is that we can do west to east without conflicting uh, um, friendlies. Here's yeah, some other just... things as well. I recommend that if you do have a little bird, to use that. Uh, those are really good assets. I use them way more uh, for insertion and extraction. Um, obviously, we don't because we're using we have more than three people, so you we're gonna be in Blackhawk. And a little bird. And a little bird in an MH6 you can get with uh, pilot six people in it. Yeah, we yeah. can quick on as kids. Uh, quick we question. just use a Blackhawk. It's fine. We already got one. In this event, how I'm going first? What does that exactly mean? If we're also working as a group? Say again. You said. Well, it made it pretty clear that I was going first, quote unquote. But what does that mean in the event? You're going to be controlling first, and then once you're done, okay. we'll pass it on to somebody else. Gotcha. All right. So the, the practical, uh, I mean, just think of it this way. This is more or less the exam portion of it. Um, it's nothing too cosmic. All right. So just take it for what it's worth. If you have any questions, just ask me. Um, so go ahead and take it out when you guys are ready. You gonna have any call sign for ground ground commander? I'll just be fluffer. You guys use your own respective mm -hmm. nicknames with whatever combination you want to use. I don't so care. channel two. Yes. So could we? So for call signs, okay. can we just be like name one one? Yeah, I don't care. Okay. So hellhound one one, tassel one one. I'm gonna go with uh, let's see here, blood ninja Juliet. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I won't say all. that over the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a joke. You're, I'm, you all are familiar with the tales of Blood Ninja, yes. Why don't you call you uh, Death Star? It's like a, Death Star is a JTAG call sign. Yeah, it's like, well, it's basically, uh, I put on my robe and wizard hat. Come on. Alright, let's take it out, guys. Alright, let's go. Uh, should I take a little bird or something else after I drop them? fine. Okay. I got aviators. I don't need no goggles. No, I want to be in the front seat. In the back seat. What so, uh, hey Tazel, how much ordnance do we get to blow Damn. on the way over there? Say again. Say again, sorry. So to confirm, we're on short range 1 and long range 2. Yeah. Alright. Can we ask the ground force command to like say tune uh, long range two if needed? Just alright. Ready? Game faces, we're about to drive. Here we go, boys. Green light. Yep, yep, yep.
Five by five. Radio one one time hack sixteen ten. Ready for aircraft check in. Rodeo 1-1, one, one, game 6-9, send check-in. Rodeo 1-1, one, one, package 1-2-3-4, one, 1 times Alpha 10 Charlie, uh, orbiting IT Walrus. Playtime is 6-0 mics, ordnance 10 times gun runs, 14 rockets, 2 times AGM 6-5, 4 times AGM 12, 2 times AGM 9 9 Abort in the clear. I'll copy. Rodeo 1-1, one, one, game 6-9, copies all. Uh, stay when ready to uh, receive situation report, over. Rodeo 1-1's one, prepared to copy. Roger. Rodeo 1-1, one, one, game 6-9, situation is as follows. Uh, friendly forces have are uh, currently pushing in in two times Black Hawks towards HLZ Alpha and will be forming a, up at phase line hot dog break. Enemy forces consist of a uh, platoon size element uh, and district team in objective one around the grid vicinity of 062-112. Break. Uh, no uh, other A threats uh, at this time. Uh, artillery, uh, friendly artillery is cold. Break. Uh, extra restrictions will uh, most likely be uh, gun runs uh, east to west and vice versa. How copy? Gabe 69, Rodeo 1 1, say location LZ Alpha, HLZ Alpha. Rodeo 1 1, Gabe 69, HLZ Alpha, grid 060107. I read back, friendly force is going to be landing 060107. Yeah, read back, correct. It's also be advised to the JTAC team, which will be in the grid vicinity of 066108, uh, giving you uh, break. giving you observations and uh, 9 line call runs over. I read back, JTAC in 066108. A firm on read back. Just reference, okay, the the blue three-story compound, go three compounds to the north on the west side of the uh, MSR there. Yes, um, wait, are these simulated contacts? Or yes, simulated contacts, we're just going to call that that whole area. 
Copy. Could we mark it on the map as well? You guys can mark it if you want. Yeah. And now you need to talk the aircraft on target, right? Yep. Radio 11, Gabe 69, reference three story building in grid 062113 uh, by uh, MSR uh, northwest to southeast. Alright, let's say that. Contact. Continue. Radio 11, Gabe 69, from that location to 200 meters north. To the ASR pushing northwest, uh, there have been known uh, infantry contact sighted. Uh, stand uh, by for nine months. Ready one one, prepare to copy. Yep. Rodeo one. Disregard. Radio 11, Gabe 69, type 2 in effect. Break. 1, 2, 3, NA. Target elevation 2062, MSL. Target description 5, uh, squad size, uh, enemy contact infantry roaming tree line. Break. Target location 063113. North side of the MSR in the trees. Break. Type mark, none. Location of friendlies, uh, 800 meters uh, southeast. Egress, uh, north. Uh, how copy? Radio 11, I read back line 4, 2062, line 6, 063113, north side of MSR, line 8, 800 meters southeast. Uh, ready for remarks. Radio 11, Gabe 69, read back correct. Remarks are as follows. Uh, restrictions, uh, do not uh, fire at anything south of the zero, sorry, uh, break. Restrictions, do not fire anything south of the 112 northing. Uh, gun run, need guns on target location east to west. How copy? I would have given him the uh, 11... Uh, I read back, uh, nothing south of 112 northing east to west gun run. I would have given him the 109 or the 110 northing, so if he saw anything else in the town, he could do it. Radio 11, Gabe 69, read back correct, stay when inbound. I actually would have cut him off at like the the uh Hey Fuffa. Yo. Go back in five minutes, is that a cat? Yep. Okay, go back. Radio one one's in from the east. Radio 11, Gabe 69, BDA is as follows. Uh, all enemy uh, infantry contacts have been neutralized. Uh, good effect on target. Gabe 69, good effects, return back to IP, Walrus, over. Ready 1-1, one, one, copies.
Bye. Radio 11, Overlord 69, be advised, we have enemy anti-air assets in the AO, so stay clear, we'll advise, out. 1-1 one, one copies. One six nine situation update. We have triple A battery in the town in the uh, previous AO. If you reference the T intersection of the MSR, he is uh, approximately one hundred meters northeast. Contact. Maverick shot on him without uh, getting shot down. Should be able to. Alright, wait one. Nine line, as follows.
Alright, uh, nine line as follows. One, two, and three, NA. Target elevation, uh, reference from last nine line. Target description, dish gum, location, uh, it's already been relayed. It's the, uh, last contact. No mark. Friendly is one click south. Uh, egress north. Overlord 69, ready 1-1, one, one, uh, repeat line 6. Line 6, uh, if you see previous calls contact. You're talking about the, uh, north of the MSR. Yep, that, uh, dish gum I had you call contact on, that's what you're looking for. Roger, I read back line 4, 2062, line 6, uh, north of, north of T-section, MSR, 100 meters, line 8, 800 meters, south. Affirmative, you're cleared hot, go fuck him up, and, uh, try not to get shot down. One one's wings level. Alright, uh, re-engage, previous nine lines still in effect, uh, BDA, you hit, you had good effect on target, but it was not the target we were looking for. Roger that. One one's in from the south. Hot. That Fluffer trying to tell us something. Rusty's taking over. Fluffer, if you can hear me on the uh, 3 for 3, it's Rusty taking over. Roger. Uh. Fluffer? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> I accidentally dragged that. <laughs> Holy shit, that was funny. I'm not even mad. That was like complete misclick. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. I was like, "What the fuck is he doing?" <laughs> and then, like, before I could get, like, I don't know, I was fumbling with the keyboard. No shit, I turned around and he fucking shot me. <laughs> Hellhound Overlord, please uh, return to IP Walrus. You are being uh, release authority is being passed to uh, Rusty One at this time. Uh, is it only lagging for me, or oh, I'm getting some lag too? Rusty One, be advised. Hellhound uh, 11 off station 5 mic. My FPS are down to uh, under 10. One mic, Rusty One, one out. Yeah. I spawned some insurgents. I don't know if they're going to be there or not. You just have uh, when you do that mouse thingy where you release the mouse button uh, there, there will be the stuff you spawn so if I click on 1-1 one, one alpha and then drag to a position on the map and I drop it 
Uh, yeah, it, it should you, spawn, right? It should spawn there where you drop, but you don't need to uh, uh, draw such a big line. It's just you just go there where you want to have the enemies. I completely and suck at this whole admin thing. I can teach how to be a JTAC, but um, <laughs> okay. So do me a favor if you can spawn some insurgents uh, at that like like a technical or something like that. Okay, where? Is that uh, right, uh, zero six two, uh, just to the west of objective one. Okay. Hey, who's on this net? Uh, who's on? Hey, who's, uh, who's the JTAC on this net? Left. Uh, I've been told to come with five. Fluffy, how copy? This is Rusty. I'm the JTAC. I've uh, been told by Hellhound with five. Okay, that's cool. Uh, interrogative? Yeah, send it. Uh, Roger, I've referenced the point 100 meters just southeast of the Meret as front row of shops as attack objective. Is that okay? Over. Uh, d hey dude, take a look at grid uh, 062113 in that area. You might see some uh. personnel there. Roger, 062113. Uh, yeah. Be advised, uh, friendly uh, front line of trace right now. Uh, the Platoon has moved to grid 062110. Uh, looks like they're pushing into the town. They're going to hold short of the town south. Uh, so you, need, you guys need to start clearing out those insurgents before they can move in. Uh, I think I accidentally spawned uh, Texas Army. That's fine. And there's no technical, but then I was just spawn a UAC or something like that. Uh, I have no night vision goggles. Why? Right, so how the fuck? Do, okay, so how do I teleport myself then? Cause I've already tried that. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Um, you draw the the mouse, and there we'll stop and release the button. Uh, and there we will go. You just have uh, when you and do the drag thing, you right? yeah, move player to write the first one. See, I did that. It's not moving me. Huh? Uh, for me, it works when I'm on the map. Dragging left, yeah. left click drag one one alpha move to and then move player right. Oh no 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 the move player is just for yourself. When you want to uh, move uh, teleport uh, people, uh, just get a vehicle and let them enter the vehicle and then teleport the whole vehicle. No, but uh, like that's my point. I'm trying to move myself and it's not letting me move myself. Oh okay. No, just where you want to go. Left mouse button click drag. There we want to teleport, uh, release the button, uh, and then choose move player. Yeah, it's not moving me. Uh, I think you teleported like a uh, meter. You don't have to click yourself. Yeah, no, I'm trying. It's not letting me. Okay, wait a second. You guys brought night vision, right? Nope. Of course we did. Here, spawn, a spawn a vehicle here. Uh, teleport us back to the base and then I'll go grab some nogs. Uh, how many night visions do you guys yep. need? Uh, you have to go a little bit to the north. There should be a vehicle. I got, I got three up here. Overlord needs goggles. Okay. Ah, uh, that's. Please let me have a flashlight. Yeah. There should be a vehicle here. Ah, wait a second. Let's just push to the north. Fluffer, uh, night vision crates marked with red cam light. Whoopie. 
didn't create Maybe a vehicle. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah. Alright, let's uh, do some night cast then. Here, I'll take uh, the passenger if you want to drive. Or just. Yeah, I don't need to drive. Hello, 1 1, this is Rusty. 1, are you ready to copy over? Okay, we are there. Uh, that's the negative, I'm still taking off. Roger, going back once to overhead, IP, uh, Waltz, and Rusty, one up. Where is it? I don't see it. Ah, there we go. Alright, I've got porn. Yeah, just tell E us to that position. Okay. Alright, he's taken off now. So what are some uh hold on, let me get my keyboard because I can't see shit. Accepted. Uh so what are some good ways of Rusty? your position? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna put an IR cam uh, light on it. Did you drop them? No, accept my uh, mouse wheel accept and I will give I you don't get any accept yet. You try again. No. Hold on, one one. Time hack is eighteen thirty. Or correction, twenty thirty. Available. Okay, you have one now. Hold on, one one. This is Rusty or JTEC, standby. Okay, so you got IR strobes, right? Uh, but here's a. I mean, if the enemy has MVGs, they'll see you. Yeah. Um. So those are some considerations that you're gonna have to take. Um. Visual marking still works at night if they can see it. Um, but, you know, just like I said, think out Hellhound, there. one one, mission number one two three five, one times A ten Charlie orbiting IP Walrus. Uh, ordnance loadout is eleven times gun runs. One times AGM six five, four times GBU twelve, two times AIM nine X, and fourteen FFAR rockets. Time on station is four five mics. How copy? Hellhound 1-1, one, one, uh, Rusty 1, solid copy, and uh, standby for 9-line. 1-1's one, prepared to copy. Uh, I put the IR strobe on the other side of the hill so the contacts shouldn't be able to see it. Mm -hmm. uh. Just finalize the 9-line, okay. Hellhound 1-1, one, one, this is Rusty with your 9-line. Currently you should be holding IP Walrus. Targets are 2 times enemy man, light armed, heading 330 off the IP. And friendlies are located 800 meters to the southeast from enemy targets. Target location is grid reference 0625-1134, break. Advised friendly marked by you IR strobe. Are cleared type 2. And be advised, enemies are marked with IR strobe. No. Sorry, friendlies are marked with IR strobes. I repeat, friendlies are marked with IR strobes. And your egress should be to the north east. Restrictions are as follows. Do not engage anywhere southwest of phase line hot dog. And Ordinance requested is one times gun run on the two times enemy man. You are now cleared hot after readback. Rusty one over. Rusty one one one. That's a negative. Uh, use a new nine line. Use the actual format. Uh, Hellhound one one. Roger, standby. Only nine uh, you guys need to help him out. This. 
This is the only form I have, IP, heading, distance, target elevation, target description, target location, mark type. Oh, you gotta do it in order, he means. Egress and remarks. Is that the right order, or I mean, should I change it up? That's all I have. That's the right order. Okay. Um, I guess... I just put a link really, in chat Everything kind of seemed kind of spread out like it was, I don't know. Yeah. It seemed like you kind of like went back and forth a bit. It sounded like Does a anybody else need uh, before 9-line, and then like, you went yeah. into 9-line straight away you before you advised him. type 2 at the end. Okay. Well, I, I should think, say clear type 2 at the end, is what you mean. No, that's what you do. You oh. should be like, before the 9-line, you should be like, type link in effect, and then start getting type the 9-line. Okay. But there's nothing and wrong with saying. You were saying I... like beheading all this unneeded information from the IP, but he wasn't necessarily coming in from that IP. So he that. Hey, are we using right. green chem lights or yeah, anything? Take us back into town. No, I have our position marked with our uh, left and right flanks are marked with. We're in a town. Yay, oh, we're in the middle of a tree. <laughs> 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 um. All right, dude. You can. MVGs are so damn bright. Yeah. Um, spawn me. Did you spawn that patrol? I don't see it. Uh, I did, but I don't know if, it, if they are there. Yep, they, they are there. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I got it. observed any enemy in the town, there should be like two squads there. Yeah, I just saw your body and took your uh, dog tag. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah, if you can take us back to base. Or not base, the uh, JTAC team. Yep, jump in. Yeah, all my direct click options aren't working. I don't know why. I, I think I'm still an instructor. It should be fine, but it was best contact call ever. Are they there? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're there. All right. All right. What do you have a problem with? Just I, mean, I got the form on Nana, but I can't find out to you guys again, and I'm not sure, like. What is the, what is the correct format? So I'm gonna start off with the grid of the enemy position, then the head. Okay, so let's let's do this. Uh, maybe you should just listen to somebody else while they do it, and then you'll go last.
use that. This is Imp Craze. I mean, I just showed up and I can. I have a 9 lane Crest in here. Phoenix. It's funny, man. Hellhound 1 1. Checking in. Roger, Hellhound 1, now continue all between the wheel, IP Walrus, and I'm going to be handing off control now to new JTAC, M Crest. That's Rusty 1 up. Alright, so what are some other considerations? The friendlies are now uh, outside of town, right? They're set up that blocking position and you have a patrol in the town. Um, so just use, just use, think outside of the box here. What would you be thinking about doing? And let's say you kind of have an idea where the... Uh... I would be thinking about pushing west since they would have uh, better eyes with the... There's like a hill here that kind of... I don't know. Try to, yeah, I'd move west. So you want to move them to the west, right? Um... Or, well, I'm sorry. What, what, what are you thinking about right now? Alright, so, Fluffer, I have a mm -hmm. question. Do I say, uh... This is, uh... This is Imcraze 1-1, one, one, Type 2, Control, in effect, Standby for 9-line, or do I... Yeah, that's it? exactly, that's the format, how you should right, be doing it. Got 10 lives, make sure you're using, um... <laughs> um, and Crack the reason up. why... Alright, so... You want to tell them what to expect, what type of nine line, or what type of control that you're going to be putting them on, and you're basically getting them prepared. When I say, you know, hog one one, full for six nine, type two controls in effect, say I'm ready for nine line. That gets his ears, you know, tuned in to really getting focused on uh, receiving that nine line. You don't want to just say, hey, hog one one, type two control one two three and a four. You know, you want to give them time to prepare. Yeah, Roger. Um, so, some other considerations here is that you have your Night 2 Vector as well. Uh, let's say you can reference the target. I mean, just find those enemies and kill them, man. Uh, you know, this, is, this isn't this is cosmic stuff. We've already gone through nine lines for like the last two days. Alright, so you've been pushed. Uh, you've got a new aircraft on station. Uh, what I want you to do is get a new check-in from him. I want you to give him a situation update. Or, um, uh, I'm sorry. Overlord, turn your strobe back on. A situation report. Act white one. Of where the friendlies are. So I gave you guys Act a friendly, friendly grid at uh, 061110 about 20, mix, uh, 20 mics ago. They're still there. Uh, so you need to find the enemy, update those positions, and you need to pass that off to the situation update. If you can't see the enemies, you need to move closer. Yeah, Roger. Hellhound, Overlord. Strobe is active and attached to my person. Over. Do you have any chem lights on? There are two chem lights bracketing my position. Yeah, Roger that. I can't see any marking anymore, so I don't know what you did, but you broke it. Hey, fuck it. You said we well, have another me. asset? Say again? You said we now have another a asset? Uh, in a minute. Hold on. And do I, <coughs> if I'm requesting a check-in, I say requesting check-in or what? Uh, yeah, just tell him, you know, request fighter backer. Alright, I've thrown the strobe on the deck instead of attaching it to myself. Uh, can you see it? That's a negative. Alright, wait one, I'm gonna see if I, I'm gonna uh, pick up the IR lights, drop green lights, see if you can see those.
Hellhound 1 1, mission number 1 2 3 5, 1 times Alpha 10 Charlie, uh, orbiting the airfield. Ordinance is as follows 11 times gun runs, 14 times FFAR rockets, 1 times AGM 65, 2 times AIM 9 or X, and 4 times GPU 12, time on station, 3 5 mics. How copy all? This is Imperial 1 1, good copy. Hellhound 1 1, this is Imperial 1 1, Type 2 control in effect, standby for 9 land over. 1 1's prepared to copy. Ingress from the south, heading not applicable, distance not applicable, target elevation 2060 zero, zero meters above sea level. Target description, enemy infantry in the open. Target location, 0623-1135. Type mark, laser, code 1001. Location of friendly is 1000 meters southeast. Egress to the north. Stand by for restrictions. Over. 1 1, I read back line 4, 2 0 6 0, line 6, 0 6 2 3, 1 1 3 5, line 8, 1000 meters south, additional laser marks, code 1 0 0 1. Ready for remarks. This is increase 1 1. Do not hit anything east of easting 0 6 6. Requesting one times GPU on target. Over. Thank you. 